This is Leadhead Jason. I want to say congrats to Lefty and the Talking Lead Podcast on 300 episodes. Looking forward to many more to come. This is Kenneth McGee, and I want to say congratulations to Talking Lead on 300 amazing episodes, and look forward to many more to come. We're live, guys. All right, all right, all right, lead hits. We are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Who wants to tell me what episode number this is? 312. Is that a girl? Amber. Amber on the spot. This is episode 312. And if you didn't get a chance to go listen to last week's episode, we had a very special, awesome guest. And uh, which one of you lead heads want to tell us who our guest was last week? It was Jack Carr, author Jack Carr, author of The Terminal List and True Believer, his new book. You guys haven't had an opportunity to check those books out yet, which I haven't, and I'm going to. They're on my list. I know Amber and I were talking about this. Uh, We have added those to our read-a-book list. Yes, we have. Yes, yeah. I'll probably do the audio version because I'm not a big reader-reader, you know? I'm totally all about books, so... I'll definitely get the books. I like to reread them. So check that episode out. We also had Charlie Melton from Charlie Mike Precision joining us. And uh, another familiar voice, and you're not going to see his face because he can't get his camera to work either. But uh, the man who made last week's episode possible is joining us today on our live feed, Mr. Jason Farmer. Welcome in, Jason. Thank you, Lefty. Hello, Leadheads. Glad I wish to be you, back again. wish you could get your camera working. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's that Mac thing. I hear you. Yeah. I, bet, I think everybody else is on Windows, and we're all just doing just fine. But, uh, yeah, so Jason is joining us again this week, and we've got several other lead heads that are joining us, and we're going to introduce them now. So let's start at the bottom of my screen. I don't know how it's showing up on YouTube or anywhere else. Uh, but it's the peck. So introduce yourself, Mark and Amber. All right. Amber gets to go first. I'm Amber Peck, and I'm actually really new to the podcast. Um, we recently went on a trip to Indiana, and we're stuck in the car for 10 hours. And he forced me to listen to podcasts the whole trip. And <laughs> this was the only one that I liked. I really enjoyed listening to um, Talking Lead. I love so it. I started listening to more. I love it. I love it. Way to go, Mark. Way to way to force your woman to your make her bend to your will. Bend her to my will. <laughs> I just got lucky. It's a good podcast. That's why she likes it. Um, and I'm Mark Peck. Uh, we live down here in Enterprise, Alabama. I've been listening to the podcast for a little over a year now. I listen to it while I'm driving around for work most of the time, and I think it's one of the best podcasts there is out there because there's always something fresh and new, and it never gets boring. And you learn something every podcast. Well, thanks. So I mean, that's that's kind of our goal is to be is to be entertaining, but also educational. So it's nice to know that we're accomplishing our goals. So let's move on up to our next guest. We've got another uh, fellow Tennessean joining us, and uh, Michael, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Michael Perry. I'm Mustang Perry on uh, most of the social media. Uh, I've been listening to the show since. Y'all's first episode, actually. And uh, I, I mean, listen, listen to it at work. I'm a truck driver. Back in our Mexican so. radio uh, days. Yep, Mex- <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, definitely. All right. Next on my screen as we move up, uh, we did Jason. So let's move on up to Kenneth with his Leadhead Brigade shirt on there. Love it. Uh, well, actually, Kenneth. that's the classic shirt. That's not the brigade one. That's oh, the yeah. classic. Nice. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, talking lead. I did get the uh, the leadhead brigade patch. So that one's huge. <laughs> it's a big patch. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Kenneth. I've been listening to talking lead for about a year now. I listen to podcasts at work, 
helps make the night go by. The way your podcast is set up, you can go back, listen to older episodes. So I've been doing that here and there. Uh, kind of get what caught the up. Said. That's it's right. Very educational. Yeah, you can always learn stuff. So it's it's not like you know you can go back you know three years and listen to one, and it's not like it's necessarily outdated. Cause you, you got a pretty nice uh, format. Well, thanks. Man. Uh, I listen to podcasts all night long. So, but I'm always excited when yours comes out. It usually, it's like Friday night. So, I'm like, ooh, talking lead. You know, let's let's see what he's got. So. Yeah, I'm a little inconsistent on my posting, but I try to make it Fridays when I can. I'm just going to welcome everybody in our chat room and now. Then, well, and then I was also, I was saying, I, I was also, uh, I've won a couple of uh, things from your podcast too. So you give away a lot of nice stuff. Yeah, I try to give everybody an opportunity to to win. Uh, I make you work for it, for the most part. But uh, uh, now, Amber, didn't you just win something recently? I did. I won the seventy five dollar Glock gift. <laughs> card Woo-hoo! yes now have you used it yet yes i have you did you've already cashed it in and mark didn't get a penny of it did he <laughs> he wouldn't let me out buy something for him and he wouldn't let me do it well there you go that's nice so you yeah. use it all on yourself what'd you get we got to know what'd you get okay so i got um a field knife a field knife um oh, nice. been wanting one of those for a while uh, a Glock charm bracelet. I got a. I have a cold mug, but I do not have a hot drink mug. So I got a blue. I oh, know I need one. I need uh, one. Talking Letty. What is wrong with you? <laughs> well, I didn't know but it's about free that. at Glock. So yeah, I don't blame you. I'd do that too. Yeah. So I got a blue one of those at Glock. Um, and then I got a shirt that says. Can't remember exactly. Not a pepper spray girl. Oh, okay. So you got a lot of nice stuff. You racked up. Very good. Unfortunately, I don't own any blocks or I would have got parts. But we've got two more of those to give away. Stay tuned. Two two to give away. We've got a lot of cool things to give away. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's go to our next guest. We're going up the list here. And we've got Pew Pew RN. On the social hey media. guys, I'm QQRN. Um, I have that name because I'm into shooting competitions and also I'm a full time registered nurse. And you had to change your name because Jaeger wouldn't let you take your class unless you <laughs> he changed the name. <laughs> yeah, I'm t- yeah, I'm taking his class next month on September the 14th and 15th. Sweet. And also shot with the host. <laughs> Here, lefty in a class in Tennessee. That's right at Royal Range. Eric joined us for that uh, Rob Pincus uh, PDN tour class that we set up. We had another one set up in California. It had to get rescheduled. Uh, I, I don't think it's been yet, but uh, you guys can go to the, their website and see when that class is. And then we're going to work on getting some other ones around the country. So if you're interested, uh, in, in us getting one of your favorite instructors out in your area, get in touch with me and we'll uh, see what we can do to, to make that happen. And what's that? What are you showing us? What are you rubbing in our nose now? That's the, that's the FK Burno that I got to shoot of Pincus's oh, yeah. shell casing. Nice. I still got it. That. Yeah, that's another gun that I put holes in holes with. <laughs> <laughs> when we shot put that holes gun. in your wallet. Yeah, it can if you want to own one of those. So did I get everybody? Everybody that's here? We got everybody introduced? All right, sounds like it did. So we got we got the Pecs, Amber and Mark, and they're down in Alabama. We got Kenneth McGee and Michael Perry, fellow Tennesseans. And we got Jason Farmer, who's in Virginia. And we got Eric, who's in South Carolina. So we kind of got a good sampling of you leadheads from around the country there. And, uh, I mean, who knows? Uh Chad from Caltech is supposed to join us. I don't know if he uh, is going to be able to do it or not. And then also our good buddy Schwell, and they're both down in Florida. So uh, they were going to represent the Florida man <laughs> this episode. But they still may join us. But we got a lot to cover today. So the reason that I have gathered the Leadheads and we're doing a special live broadcast is uh, we're going to nominate we're not going to nominate we're going to narrow down our list of nominees for the talking lead lead force one 
So we started a new segment uh, a few episodes back, and uh, it started off being Lefty's Heroes, and I just didn't feel comfortable with us calling it that, because this show is about you guys, the listeners of the Leadhead Brigade, so we're calling it the Leadhead Brigade Heroes. A little bit longer, but we can abbreviate it. We can go LHB Heroes, you know. But uh, we're gonna we gotta have a, a pilot for that, just like the gunny uh, is in charge and conducts our talking lead jack wagon train. Uh, we're gonna get us a pilot for Lead Force One, and we're gonna we're gonna do that a little bit later. Uh, but first, we want to take care of what guys? What do you hear rolling in? Jack wagon train. There you go. Gunny, bring that train in. Hey, Ralph, Semper Pie, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week, so brace yourself, baby. All right, so the train has stationed, and we've got several Jack Wagons we want to take care of. And true to form, I'm going to start off with our guest, and I'm going to pick you guys at random here. So let's go with... Jason Farmer, what what's your jack wagon this week? All right. I'm going to have to go with some of these turncoat Senate Republicans oh, that we've been hearing about. Easy targets. Easy targets. Easy targets. It's low-hanging fruit, but uh, <laughs> something that's been on my mind, and I have to get on my soapbox and get it. talk about it, get, a, get it out of my system. Well, let's hear it. That's um, what we're here for, brother. Make you feel better oh. and, and, and get you ready to go out and take on the day tomorrow. I appreciate that. Uh, number one, I'd have to uh, mention Lindsey Graham um, okay. and the red red flag laws. Oh God, uh, he's red actually a co-sponsor. Yeah, of red flag laws. We also have several others. Uh, Rick Scott's also one of them. Um, Mike Turner, and I believe it's Pat Toomey. I think is his name from Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they're all. <clears throat> pushing for red flag law legislation and it's it's very scary a lot of people don't really understand it uh it's kind of difficult to understand but basically they some of these are pressing for the ability to take your firearms away even if someone a neighbor or a family member has asked um you know called the atf called the police department said, hey, you know, I don't know about this guy. I don't know about that Jason fellow over there. He shoots a lot of guns and stuff like that. He makes me uh, scared. I'm scared for my family. It's it's a complete so, violation of our, our civil rights, and there's no way it's going to hold up, uh, you know, somebody can test it. So just, just nip it in the bud and, you know, contact your local politicians, uh, people that represent you supposedly, and let them know that you're not for these these red flag laws. They're absolutely ridiculous. And there's 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 going to be a a shit storm over this. Pardon my language. I told you guys not to use profanity, and there I go. <laughs> you got you got to monitor me on this. Uh, but I, you know, I think it's gonna we're gonna see a lot of of bad happen. People bucking the system with these red flag laws, uh, and then it's ve- eventually. You know, we're going to get a court case out of it, and they're going to rule it's unconstitutional. So, unfortunately, that's the way these things go. So, any more? Is that is that your jack wagon? Uh, I've got uh, I've got another one here. It's more of a a strange one. Okay. Um, it's the I'll go ahead and read the uh, the headline. This is from the Daily Mail dot com. Remains of supermarket employee twenty five who went missing ten years ago have been found in an eighteen inch gap behind a freezer inside of a store. Oh my gosh! So, so this was the no frills supermarket. Uh, oh my gosh! So this guy was he was twenty five years old. He he found, had an argument with his family apparently, and he had left uh, home, stormed out, and they think that he went to his place of work, somehow climbed up on top of these freezers and fell down in behind them, and got stuck and died. But he is not the person I'm nominating for the jack wagon. I'm I'm nominating everyone else that worked in that grocery store as jack wagons for not realizing that there was a dead body decaying behind the freezers. Oh my gosh. That had that to have stunk. Had to. Had to. That I guess somebody might have thought that the milk was bad in the freezer, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> and they just left it? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh! Either that or a bad case of raw meat. <laughs> you got some. You got some bad de- um, homicide detectives too. <laughs> <laughs> But they evidently there was no uh, no foul play. It, it appears that he just climbed up there somehow, and for some reason fell down and behind. They the actually um, stuck. Uh, what a they, way they actually a lot of the employees used to. There was a story that came out where they interviewed a bunch of people, and a lot of the employees used to get up there and hang out on their break to get away from all the supervisors. So that's how he knew oh, to get up there. Okay. And then he went in. Uh, when he was stormed out of his house with fight with fighting with whoever he was living with, uh, he drove to work in a snowstorm when the store was closed and got in and climbed up there and fell. And I think he broke his leg so he couldn't climb back out or something. Mm, wow. But you would still think that uh, next day or two, someone would, would hear <laughs> him back there. Right. Yeah, you, you would think so. I think there's something more to this than, than me. It sounds the a little eye. fishy. Yeah, this Sounds is just not fishy. adding up. I'm not buying off on that. Definitely. Nobody reported him missing. Oh, he was reported missing. They were looking for him. Nobody, nobody knew where to find him though. Nobody couldn't find him, huh? Oh my! Uh, he was was reported missing by the family. All right, let's move on to our next one. Uh, how about the pecs? Let's start off with Amber first. So my jack wagon, it comes from oddly enough. Peck, Idaho. Um, Officers responded to a call of shots fired in the 21,000 block of Big Canyon Road in Peck at 11.13 a.m. Thursday. A resident told officers he was trimming trees with his shotgun and was cited for careless discharge of a firearm. Okay. (laughs) I don't know if I'd be good enough with a shotgun to knock branches out of trees. Must be some good dead ones. I mean, and I mean, shotgun shells aren't that expensive, but still, I mean, it's more expensive than taking a freaking one of those pruners to it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not as fun. Are there pictures of this? I, that's something I want to. Is there a video? Surely somebody did a video of this guy. Apparently not. When I was looking for the uh, news article, there's all kinds of YouTube videos of people doing it. So apparently he wasn't the one that came up with the grand idea. Yeah, grand. I think Hickok made a video about it. I, I seriously <laughs> think that every one of them need to be nominated as Jack Wagons because that is just ridiculous. Yeah. Mark, you got one? Oh, mine was just, you know, everybody calling for the ban on assault weapons and everything now. Uh, and then the one that I found was a uh, Instagram post. Didn't know who it came from originally, but it has a uh, – it's both Joe Biden standing there talking about getting rid of guns and then someone that could fall in as a hero holding a sign up behind him saying that Joe Biden has been protected by assault weapons his entire life. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, these guys that have security all the time don't have to worry about their own protection. Right. So we don't need what we want to protect ourselves. Plain, plain hypocrites. Exactly. It's a good one. Eric, what you got? I'm going to throw Dan Crenshaw. What? On the Jack Wagon train. What? He made for, He made the the Lead Force One, Lead Head Brigade Heroes. So we're jerking yeah, him off. The, we're him. jerking him off. We're pulling he, him off the plane. Turned, <laughs> he's, he's turned around quickly. You know, he was the... The guy with the iPad that came out of Texas that in the beginning presented himself as a very constitutionally minded conservative. He was one of the first people on Instagram to start pushing for the red flag laws as soon as this shooting happened. So I'm going to throw him on the bus because he's kind of pushing this, the other Republicans and other people in Congress to get on get on with them and push for the red flag law. So he's one of the big instigators behind all this and the TAPS Act. Yeah, he's going to get a big backlash from that. Um, you'll probably see him flip again before it's over. That's what we're worried about. He's kind of doing a trunk where he says one thing and then a couple months later he's saying something else. Yeah. That's what politicians are good at. Yep, Michael. All right. Unfortunately, mine's not uh, mine's not firearm related, but uh, I've been traveling on vacation, and I just want to throw 
all the idiot drivers on the road on the jack wagon train. Your typical holiday just, traffic, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, and I mean it's just you think there'd be a little bit more that goes into driving or like getting off your phone, paying attention to the road, actually using the stupid stick on the, the left side of the steering wheel. You think people would understand how to do that, but where gosh, did you where did you go on miserable. vacation? Uh, I'm I, I'm on my way to Vermont right now. We're in uh, Corning, New York, at the moment. Oh, so you're you're not in Tennessee right now. You're in New York. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Nice. No, that's good. We got to have uh, you know leadheads up there too. Definitely. You can spread yeah. the word while you're up there. Oh yeah, definitely. Heck yeah, Heck yeah. So yeah, I can I can get on board with holiday travel travelers. Uh, they are a pain in the ass. Who else has got one? Jack wagons. Let's take care of them. Get them while they're hot. Uh, I can go next. Okay. All right. So I'm nominating the guy up in Springfield, Missouri, uh, walking around the Walmart in full dressed out tactical gear and AR-15, <laughs> uh, causing mass panic. Yeah. Uh, Idiot. Complete jack wagon. Yes. Prosecutors uh, filed a terrorist threat charge against a 20 year old man who said he walked into a Missouri store wearing body armor, carrying a loaded rifle and handgun to test whether Walmart would honor his constitutional right to bear arms. Um, not exactly the best way to go about trying to represent the Second Amendment. Uh, you know, people got to remember when right now the Second Amendment is under a lot of fire. And if you're doing anything out of the ordinary, you're going to make the news and you're not going to represent the Second Amendment community in a good way. Uh, just leaving work uh, today, you can throw this guy on the jack wagon. Okay. Uh, this guy passed me big red NRA sticker on the back of his truck driving recklessly, zooming in and out. You know, that's not going to recommend the Second Amendment community uh, pretty good. Uh also, one other point I had on this story was uh, one of the things that might have led to this kid, he was only 20, uh, to walking around with an AR-15 is the fact that he's not allowed to carry a pistol. A lot of states don't, the majority of states don't allow anybody to have a firearm until they're 21. Uh, that's kind of yeah. the, the trend that's I going I mean, listen, right now I, I support the guy and the, care the, the message course. that he's but, trying, to, uh, trying to pre uh, present, but he presented it in a completely wrong manner. You know? Right. Uh, Had he been able to conceal carry, maybe he wouldn't have done that. I don't know. I mean, that's for him and his lawyer to decide. But uh, for the yeah. states that don't allow 21 and under to carry a pistol, they're, you know... Those people can't walk around with a firearm to protect themselves. Right, right. I mean, again, I get where the guy's coming from. I see his point, but he he did a, a piss poor job in trying to convey his his feelings and his protest. So. And it's hard to give him the benefit of the doubt when he's walking around recording. Him yeah, I mean, I'm, it online. Yeah, yeah I mean, he he knew he was stern shit. Definitely. Yeah, I'm. I'm not defending him in particular. I'm just saying for other people that are under 21, you know, it'd be nice if they had the right to conceal carry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's another thing that's, uh, you know, these politicians are banking their their future careers on is getting the the age limit changed. These these uh, leftist gun grabbers. So we definitely don't want that. Don't want them to raise it from 18 to to 21. All right. Is that is that all our jack wagons? Uh, I've got I've got one more. Okay. Nobody else has any. Yeah. Um, it's a um, a keys man threatened man with a gun for blocking a grocery store aisle. So that was <laughs> he um, did what? Say that again now. Yeah, a keys man from Florida Keys threatens a man with a gun for blocking the grocery store aisle. Oh my! So, so the man that he threatened was actually someone stalking. And uh, he, I guess he had his carts and he was stocking uh, the shelves. Well, he came up to him. He threatens to shoot him and he brandishes a firearm and threatens him for being in the way of him pushing his buggy through. So oh I guess gosh. he was trying to get to the Pringles or something like that and, and couldn't do it. So, you know, he decided he's going to pull a gun or brandish a gun, I should say. Yeah. 
So there's another person, you know, that's not representing uh, the Second Amendment community very well. No, not at all. Well, well we, we definitely know what he would do for a Klondike bar. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. I like that. That was a good one. So I had uh, I had several other jack wagons pulled up, but my computer crashed, and I don't have my links now. Uh, but there's this one, and this comes from Leadhead Jason Edgar, and I'm sure most of you guys have have heard this guy, uh, Frank Fagaluzzi. Uh, he's the guy who said Trump ordered the U.S. flags to fly at half mass. Uh, it's a conspiracy for Heil Hitler signal on the date oh, wow. that he did it. Um, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, that was that's that was in the news uh, a few days ago. Um, so it says, "I hate websites. These freaking news websites. I got these pop ups." MSNBC airs theory that Trump ordering flags to fly at half mass until eight eight is a secret Hitler dog whistle. And this guy with a serious face and demeanor uh, goes through and explains his his theory. It's completely bonkers. <laughs> oh, and this guy's a former FBI assistant director. <laughs> uh, that that kind of makes sense. You're right? <laughs> yeah, that might have been the start of the problem. Under the Barack Obama administration. That that says it all right there, but and that's can, why I'm not showing my face on here. Not just kidding. Yeah, if you just if you Google the guy's name, it's uh, Frank F I G L I U Z Z I. Uh, you'll get that story. Pretty ridiculous. And there was this cool one, and I can't. Man, I wish I could find it. It was a. Uh, it was about somebody stealing a gun at an orgy. What? Oh, I remember reading that. Oh, jeez. That was in Florida again. Was one of you that sent that to me? If you could find that story. But yeah, I remember reading about that. If you can find that story while we're while we're doing this other stuff, that'll be great. I wanna I wanna throw that up. But um, let's move on to our heroes now. Let's get that jack wagon train out of here. And Lead Force One is on its way. Lead Force One is with you from miles on the ILS. X ray, one six ray final. Air Force One, contact Reno Tower, 118.7. Have a good day. Air Force One, push your tower, good day. So it is taxiing in now, Lead Force One. And we need to honor some Leadhead Brigade heroes now. So let's let's uh, talk about our heroes. Let's load this plane up. Who wants to start? I'll go ahead and start because I got your uh, your gun orgy story too so i'll give that and give my uh, we'll say that till we get done with the heroes we'll do that oh, okay. that story after yeah yeah do the heroes. i'm gonna go to my uh <laughs> the leadhead hero i found this week with uh thomas massey congressman from kentucky uh the big hoopla about having so many rounds in our guns and everything and he tweeted out some have asked who needs 100 rounds if six brave, trained, and alert police officers with professionally maintained weapons fired 58 rounds to subdue the Dayton shooter, I'd say my wife deserves at least that many chances to protect herself and my kids when I'm not home. Amen. That was just like mic drop. He's done. Boom. He's out. <laughs> Perfect. And what's the guy's name again? Uh, Massey. Uh, Thomas Massey. Thomas Massey. All right, yeah. yeah, he definitely gets a seat on Lead Force One this week. All right, let's go to Michael. You got a you got a hero? Yes, I do. Uh, mine is the uh, we uh, about a week ago we had a convict escape in Tennessee, and uh, I wanted to put the the two the family that discovered where he was at and the police officers that actually went and captured him. Uh, it said around three thirty in the morning on Sunday morning. Uh, Harvey and Ann Taylor were jolted awake by an alert from their surveillance system. And uh, the couple come downstairs and saw a man uh, rifling through their fridge and uh, recognized him and called the cops immediately. And luckily they were quick to respond and uh, were able to apprehend him. So this happened in in our neck of the woods. Uh, Was it uh, Middle Tennessee is where it happened? It It was. It was. Yeah. I think so. so this guy who was um was he a sexual 
something that uh, what he was originally arrested on? Sexual I think assault? he was, yes. Yeah, he escaped prison. He killed one of the um, uh, prison administrators. I think they have like on campus or on site places that they live or stay. And I think this guy was on uh, lawn duty or something. And I guess he was mowing her yard and then he went in and killed her. And I don't know if he stole her car or what, but he escaped somehow. And he was on the run for what, eight days? Uh, I think right about that, yes. He yes. was apprehended on Sunday morning, though. Something around eight days. And he was, I think he only had like a couple of years left on his sentence, too. I mean, he, yeah. didn't have, he didn't have much longer left on his sentence. But he murders someone and then he uh, escapes prison. And he, I don't think he hurt anybody else during his, his uh, gallivant. But uh, he broke into this couple's garage. They had a refrigerator in their garage. And uh, like he was at the 7-Eleven convenience store picking out his, his Dr. Pepper and Moon Pie, he, uh, <laughs> they caught him on surveillance <laughs> camera. And they, uh, they just called the, the police and they came and got him. Down, tracked him down in a field, yeah. I think, nearby. Yeah, he uh, he was serving a 15 year sentence for uh, aggravated kidnapping and uh, murder. So, uh, and that sentence started in 2012. So he still had a few years left on it, but not too much. Yeah. So the 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 couple that that called him in and the the police officers that uh, made the arrest, yeah, definitely deserve a seat on the lead force one. Eric, who's your hero? Who's your lead head brigade hero? I'm going to go with the um, the Hong Kong protesters that are singing our national anthem and waving our flag. They're trying to get independence from China, which they have been for a long time. But they're kind of using our flag and national anthem to show their solidarity for freedom. Gotcha. And I, that's... You know, that's just them saying, hey, when the shit hits the fan, come save us, <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. They they know who Big Brother is. They know who their daddy is. Yeah. Yeah, and then this, uh, I found one. Can I have another one? Well, yeah, man. You, that's what we're here for. This uh, realtor that was concealed carrying while had a open house a guy came in pulled a knife during the open house and she had a gun and he ran away well why was he going to steal the house gunshot he was probably going to try to steal her i'm a i'm a realtor i'm a real estate agent and uh you know we hear about these stories all the time where uh people will call up wanting to go see a house out in Egypt, you know, out in the out in the boonies, and uh, the realtor will go alone, and you know, it's a big sale. You know, they're expecting a big commission. Of course, you know, they don't do any background checks or anything on the the person prior, and they just go out there and meet some stranger, and um, they yeah. get mugged, raped, robbed, um, murdered. So it's. Uh, there was a, there was a realtor actually here in the upstate of South Carolina, um, Todd Colehep, which I think made the national news. Which was um, he's on trial right now. They've killed at least um, I know five people, but he was a oh, realtor man. and was getting people to meet him and killing them. And so he, them it was the reverse. The actual real estate agent was a person killing people. Oh, yeah. wow. I haven't heard that one before. That's a twist. Yeah, he owned almost 100 acres of land, and this had went on for a couple of decades. Oh, wow. I hadn't heard about that story. You'll have to send me that. Uh, if you got a link to that, I want to read up on that story. Okay, I'll send it to you. But uh, we have classes here in our area for real estate agents. The group of us will get together in our um, our area. Uh, our local real estate uh, group and frequently go out and do training with firearms and self-defense and stuff. So I recommend everybody do that. Yeah. Somebody keeps going in and out. I don't know who this is that's trying to join us, but they're driving me nuts. I'm going to have to cut them out. 
Um, who's next? Jason? I'll go next. Okay. I've got one. Yeah. Uh, my hero is uh, kind of a funny take on it, but uh, <clears throat> it's a man who uses his shower gun after burglars break <laughs> in while he is in the shower. Okay. What's a shower gun? So this uh, – a shower gun, right? I don't know what that is. Um, he, a shower gun. He had a, a gun handy and ready to go in a gym bag sitting by his shower. Okay. But uh, he had reason to, to have a shower gun because we all have a reason, but he had an extra good reason. He had been broken into two or three different times on different occasions. So he had to be ready even while he was in the shower. Happened in uh, Ohio, German That's a Township. Tough Ohio. neighborhood, right there. I'm telling you. Now, when you sure say shower know. gun, I'm thinking, you know, like a super soaker, or, you know, something like that. <laughs> when you say, but this is an actual, well, real firearm, a gun that he keeps in the shower with him. By the shower, right? In the duffel bag. I was kind of hoping it was going to be taped uh, to the shower or something like that, or maybe yeah. hanging under the shower head. I have. I have Angry been places, I'm not going to say where this was, but I have been places where oh. they actually have weapons in the shower. <laughs> well, you never know. You just <laughs> never know, Lefty. You know, you I, I think that's, that's the next million dollar invention right there. You can find a place to, or find a way to weatherproof a firearm in the shower. Yeah. So you always have a shower gun. You don't have to worry about it being outside the shower. There you go. It's right there. There's in there with you. Marine Magnet. <laughs> the picture on the original article had one of those little orange dry boxes you buy at Walmart to put all your valuables in your boat, and it was like duct tape to the wall. Turns out that wasn't actually how he had had it done. His gun was in a bag, but there you go. That's how you do it. You buy a dry box and some duct tape. You got it solved. You just need some clear Gorilla tape, and then you can just stick it. That'll work, too. Yeah. I mean, I marine grade. We just keep coming up with these ideas, and we'll eventually have it. We'll have our million dollar Shark Tank idea. <laughs> Hell yeah! All right, any just get you eight seventy marine magnum. You could do that. There's that. What's that uh, Mossberg that they make? The marine Mossberg. That'd be a good one yeah. too. All right, any more? Any more heroes? I have one. Okay. Uh, in Jerome, Idaho, um, I guess there's a theme to mine today. Um, they were cutting down trees, and one of the limbs fell across the back of one of the people cutting down the trees. And um, he, one of the guys that was with him started screaming and calling for someone to call 911. And Nicole Bradshaw heard him from her apartment and went out and actually started performing CPR on the guy who was stuck underneath the tree. And she did CPR on him until the um, paramedic showed up. And then she waited, because there wasn't a pulse when she got there, and she waited and listened until they finally got a pulse a few minutes later. And then they, they life flighted him to, um, Magic Valley. Okay. So that's in Jerome, Idaho. So I wanted to nominate her for just dropping everything and going to help somebody she didn't even know. Absolutely. Perfect candidate right there. And say her name again. Nicole Bradshaw. Okay. And did you have another one that you posted? No, no. This was your Freedom Cast post okay oh yeah yeah i'm going yeah. through uh i'm going through our uh facebook page right now and make sure i'm not missing anybody's nominations here because you guys post you'll post them on instagram you'll post them on facebook you'll send me emails so i gotta track them all down uh there's one here i think i overlooked it last week this is from josh mays and he says this man deserves to be on lead force one Good on you, soldier. And it's a Marine. This is on the Marine Reconnaissance Foundation page, it looks like. Staff Sergeant Timothy S. Williams sprinted 60 meters under fire through open terrain to provide TCCC to his team leader after he received enemy fire that shattered his femur 
and sent him tumbling into a, ca- a canal full of water. Staff Sergeant Williams scooped him up, stabilized his leg, then carried the Marine three football fields to a medevac chopper. He then took charge of a combined U.S. and Afghani team who executed an attack over two miles of mountainous terrain toward friendly forces, killing Taliban the entire way. For his courage, he was awarded the Silver Star. Thanks to our friend uh, for the great work there. He's got somebody tagged there. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, this gentleman, this uh, this soldier deserves, deserves a seat on Lead Force One. Uh, and his name is Staff Sergeant Timothy S. Williams. So thanks, Josh, for sending that in. All right, is that uh, is that all our our heroes for this week? All right, before we send that plane out of here, uh, I want to I want to hear that story about the <laughs> the stolen firearm. <laughs> all right, so you got it, Mark. I got it for you here. Okay. Uh, Deltona, Florida. This is coming off of uh, Local 10 News there. It says a Florida homeowner says someone stole a 9mm Glock handgun from his bedroom during a weekend sex party. Uh, Volusia County Sheriff Sergeant Todd Smith tells the Daytona Beach News Journal the homeowner couldn't give detectives the names of possible suspects because the 20 or so people attending the orgy wore masks. <laughs> Apparently on a bedroom nightstand during the party. It was taken between July 19th and July 21st and reported later. Nice. The party was advertised on social media and guests were encouraged to bring friends and use fictitious names or no name at all. (laughs) He said he probably only knew about five of the guests that entered the home over the weekend. Smith says it's unlikely they'll solve the crime. Just can't trust anybody these days. Well, I mean, just goes to show you, if you're going to have an orgy, put your guns away. Lock them up. <laughs> that, was, that was hilarious. Yeah. I'm glad you found that. That was that was like going to be my, my Sunday punch, and I, just, I, couldn't find, I couldn't find it. So. All right. So, again, before we get that plane out of here, we got to have a pilot. You know, I'm... I'm, I can only fly this thing so many times. So we've got numerous, numerous nominations for our pilots. And I'm going to start with you guys. We're going to go down the list, and then we're going to narrow these down to, like, the top three or four. And then we're going to put them on social media, and then we're going to let everybody have an opportunity to vote on who our, our pilot is going to be. Does that sound fair? Yeah, Sounds good. It does. Okay. All right. So we'll just start at the top up here. We'll go with Kenneth. Kenneth, who is your nomination for pilot? Uh, well, somebody else had nominated this guy, but uh, I'm definitely uh, campaigning for him. Yeah. Uh, being a fellow Navy guy myself, <laughs> I'm going for Zapper 21. Zapper 21. Yeah, baby. What do you? There you go. Nice. There's a patch for that. <laughs> I gotta get one yes, of those. There is. Send me where I can get that patch, man. Uh, I'll send have to remember link. where I found it. I'll send you the link. Okay, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So Zapper Twenty One. A few years ago, there was a, a Navy pilot, a couple of Navy pilots, and I think it was a Dare. And uh, with the contrails of the planes and whatnot, he he did a sky penis. It was pretty awesome. And the pilot remains to be named. The The Navy never came out and said his real name. But Zapper 21, like it. And that was Pierce Taylor, uh, I believe, who nominated him. Eric, who's yours? I'm going with Sully Sullenberger. Sully. Uh, pilot. Yeah. Landed in Hudson, but he was also a U.S. Air Force pilot from 73 to 1980 and was also involved with um, safety of commercial aircraft. And they also made a movie about him, so that's pretty huge. Yeah. (laughs) Tom Hanks. Good nomination. All right, next is, let's go with Jason. 
Okay. <clears throat> well, I had uh, originally nominated John Wayne. Okay. But I think I'm going to have to go with Sully Sullenberger. Okay, Woo! so you're you're going ahead and starting to vote. So you did John Wayne. That's your nomination. We'll do the voting in just a minute. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm you're sorry. getting ahead of yourself. So John Wayne, but you like you like Chelsea Sullenberger. We'll, there's been some other people that nominated John Wayne too. So we're gonna we'll leave him on there. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I think he's a good role model. He's a good role model for uh, for folks, you know. I think it's somebody that uh, you can look up to. He was a bigger than life character and uh, tough guy. Tough guy, in real life too. Yeah. And then on the the opposite side of that, Charlie Melton nominated um, the the guy that what was his name. Uh, Denzel Washington played in the movie. This drunk pilot that landed a plane, flew it upside <laughs> down, or something. I can't, I can't remember right, right. the name of that movie. Down, I think that's what he said. Did he what? In a river, upside down, I think is what he said. Yeah, but I don't think anybody was killed or anything, but that guy was like a hero, but it found out that he was like completely drunk when he was flying the plane. And um, Anyway, we're not nominating that guy, but Charlie <laughs> mentioned him last episode. <laughs> Maybe he could be the co-pilot. He'd be the co-pilot. He could be our bartender. Is what he he'd be the bartender on Air Force One. Uh, Michael. Hey, uh, can I nominate someone new, or does it has to be someone that's no, already new? No, I mean, we're taking new. We're, we're, I'm going to go through the list of everything here, but yeah, if you want to add somebody, who you got? Uh, yeah, Richard Irabong uh, was a United Air Sor- United States Air Force Major and Medal of Honor recipient in World War Two. Okay. He was uh, one of the most decorated fighter pilots in World War Two. Credited with shooting down about uh, about forty Japanese aircraft. Nice. And what's his last name? Uh, Bong, B O N G. I I love him just because of his name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dick Bong, <laughs> ladies <Yep>. and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, good. So there's a new one to add to the list. How about you, uh, Amber? Uh, you should have Mark go first. Okay, Mark, you go first. I nominated good old Russell Case from the Independence Day movie. Uh, <laughs> a character I liked him, and I mean, he's the one that saves everybody. I mean, you know, he is the hero of the movie, not not he's Will the Smith. One that up there and blows up the spaceship. So that's right. Yeah, I like Russell Case. That's a great one. And then because I had to outdo him on the flying thing, I nominated. Um, John McClane, and uh, he's he's good at everything. He can even take out helicopters with cop cars, and uh, but I do have to change my my vote. I've decided that um, I would rather see um, Jerry Sinise Sinise as the pilot. He does so much for our military, and I just really appreciate. All that he does. Yeah. So. so Mike Haven had nominated him uh, earlier. So Gary, so you're you're switching, mm-hmm. pulling your nomination, and going with Gary Sinise. Well, yes, because <laughs> okay, I'm, you can do that. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, so here's some other ones that we have. Did I get everybody? Did everybody get their their turn here? Okay. Yeah. Is anybody? Have we got anybody join us on chat right now? I think I screwed up the links and everything, so that's probably why we don't have anybody. Um, my apologies about that. Uh, this was my first time using this uh, this new YouTube live stuff, and uh, Sean at We Like Shooting came in the last minute and helped me throw it together here. So I had posted a link earlier. That's probably where everybody's at sitting there, like, when are they going to start this thing? Yeah. Well, our chat had three people in it, but. Uh... After they said they were here, no one has said anything other than that. They're being quiet. They're not, yeah. they're, they're not being chatty yeah. Cathy's. That's okay. That's all right. We're going to post this again on uh, on Friday, so everybody will have an opportunity to listen to it. So I'm going to go down the, the list here, and um, and I'm going to try to get who nominate them. There's several that had multiple nominations, uh, and then some of them I just I don't know who did it, but. 
First one is Juan Johnny Rico. Uh, that uh, from the movie Starship Troopers. If you guys uh, familiar with that movie, uh, Casper Sorry. Van Dien played him in that movie. And Josh Spill nominated him. Chuck Yeager. He's been nominated by several of you leadheads. Uh, Austin Whalen and Jason Edgar, I know, uh, nominated him. Clint Eastwood. Uh, he's, again, multiple nominations for Clint Eastwood. And then uh, Eric said his Chelsea Sully Sullenberger. Uh, George Washington has been nominated. <laughs> um, Chris Kyle. That's a good one. George Patton. Ted Nugent has been nominated as both pilot and co-pilot. Had nominations for both. Uh, Alex Kellums is one of the ones who nominated him. Uh, Han Solo from the movie Star Wars. If you guys are familiar with Han Solo. Brent Weber nominated him. And of course, Zapper 21, we just talked about him. Gary Sinise, we just talked about him. Chuck Norris. Nick Dooley nominated Chuck Norris, and I think a couple other people did. Uh, John Wayne was John Adams had nominated him, along with, uh, was it you, Kenneth, that nominated him too, or, or Jason? No. That was me. Okay. And then Amber did John McClane from you know, one, of, one of the best Christmas movies ever. Yes, and if you don't think it's a Christmas movie, you're wrong. Right. <laughs> uh, Joe Foss, and this is uh, another one of these uh, real-life war hero guys. Let me see if I can find his nominees. It says, uh, just here to add one more pilot to the list for flying Lead Force One. Joe Foss, not only is he a Medal of Honor awardee, he was the ace of aces in World War II, and he went on to be both governor of South Dakota and the president of the NRA. Joe Foss. Uh, let's see, where am I at? I just saw he was also the first commissioner of the American Football League. Really? Yeah. Hmm. The first commissioner of the AFL. Remember when we had the NFL and AFL? Are you guys old enough to, to remember that? Nope. I, I don't know before my time. Uh, <laughs> So we have another one here. It's uh, Tammy Jo Schultz. This was by Craig Bathurst. And Tammy Jo is an American commercial airline captain and retired <laughs> naval aviator known for being one of the first female fighter pilots to serve in the United States Navy. Following active duty, she became a pilot for Southwest Airlines. And I think she did something with a plane, too. It says, on April 17, 2018, as captain of Southwest Airlines 1380, she safely landed a Boeing 737-700 after the aircraft suffered an engine failure with debris causing rapid decompression of the aircraft. So there you go. Performance under stress. I like that. Uh, and then I wrote down, and I think I mentioned Timothy S. Williams, but he was a candidate to be a... Uh, Take a ride on Lead Force One. That was Josh Mays. And we did Russell Case. Chewbacca, also from Star Wars. The Wookiee. Let the Wookiee win. Nah, uh, he'd make a good co-pilot. No, he's he's been flying longer than anybody. He's like 500 years old. <laughs> I'm not a Star Wars fan, so. Oh, my. Oh my! Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I don't. You're, you're losing connection, Amber. We're losing connection. I don't hear you anymore. What? what happened? Um, this one is probably one of my favorites, and I did a little, I, a little spoof on it last episode. It's the ghost of Charlton Heston. <laughs> Not actually Charlton Heston, but the ghost. Of Charlton Heston. This was from Mark Stevens. And I'm going to read his post here that he made on. He didn't do a picture, but he did a post. And if you guys will go to our Facebook page under Visitor Post, uh, that's where all you leadheads can interact with one another. You can make posts, comments, things like that. 
It says, my nomination for pilot of Lead Force One is the ghost of Charlton Heston. And for many reasons, but here's just a couple. He was an astronaut. He was Ben-Hur. He was freaking Omega Man. He also was the president of the NRA, which was a different NRA back in his time. When he was alive, he was always badass. Now that he's a ghost, he's completely unstoppable and afraid of nothing. Sorry no photo was available. Special filters that I don't possess were needed. (laughs) Although I think that a lot of us possess his spirit. So... I love that. I had the, like this um, laugh that he did in Planet of the Apes, like in the first part of the movie. If anybody's ever watched that movie, it's one of the greatest movies ever. Uh, but I, oh, edited, yeah. I edited that. I'll edit it in this episode too. But it's it's ghostly and it fits it perfect. So. <laughs> I just found there's also a song called The Goat of Charlton Heston. I haven't played it. But what is it called? If the, there's a song named The Ghost of Charlton Heston. Really? I'll have to find that. It's on YouTube, so it should be easy to find. It's on boob tube. On the boober tubers. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to check Instagram real quick. Make sure I'm not missing any nominations. Is there any anybody that you guys know I'm, that you've seen out there that I've missed? Hashtag... Uh, TL300 and TL Glock. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. TL, because we gave away that uh, $75 gift card. And, oh, by the way, you won it. (laughs) (laughs) And, oh, by the way, Amber won it. Uh, So there's Russell Case. There's the Starship Troopers dude. There's Chuck Yeager. There's Clint Eastwood. Uh, And uh, is it Foxfire? Is that the name of that movie? Yeah. And I think that's I think that's everybody. I think we got everybody. There's uh Sullenberger. So Um Mike Haven. Um Gary Sinise is who Mike did. Gary Sinise, he also did Uncle Ted as a uh as a co pilot. Yeah, as a co pilot. Yeah. All right, so let's vote. Let's get these narrowed down to our top three or four. I'm voting for the ghost of Charlton Heston. I love that one. I'll just start us off. I wish we had people like that at the NRA again. Hey, man. Yeah. Good leadership. All right, Amber, we know that you want to vote for Gary Sinise. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm circling Gary Sinise. Mark, I'm who actually going to vote for? Oh. Uh, yeah, mine was kind of silly. Uh, silly is good. Uh, silly like, is yeah, great, dude. I'm going to stick with him for my book. That a boy. That a boy. I like that. All right. Eric. Sully? Yep, Sully Sullenberger. That a boy. Stick to your vote. I like that. Jason. We're going to have to go with uh, Sully, but the ghost of Charleston Heston sounds pretty good, too. So pick one, man. Get off the fence. Uh, I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go with Sully, I guess. I'm gonna I mean, you sound reluctant guns. in that, man. <laughs> I mean, you, you sound like you don't really want to, but nobody's forcing you. If you want to do the ghost, do the ghost. Uh, hey, I'm going to stick with Sully. All Let's right. Stick with Sully. Be. All right. Way, way to not be swayed by me. <laughs> uh, Michael. I'm going to go with uh, Gary Sinise. Okay. Gary Sinise got two votes. And... I have trouble seeing Gary Sinise as the pilot because he does so much stuff. I think he should just have a permanent ride on the plane. <laughs> well, well, we'll award him a seat, definitely. Kenneth, who, who do you got? Uh, sticking with Zapper 21. Zapper 21, all right. I hear frogs. Is somebody outside? Uh, I had to move outside. There's that just our audience. <laughs> there's, there's some tree frogs out here. 
I hear crickets. I hear crickets. I hear crickets. I think we got our list. I think we got it narrowed down. So uh, the ghost of Charlton Heston, Russell Case, Gary Sinise, Zapper Twenty One, and Sullenberger. That sound like a good good list. That's sure. five. Sounds good. So we'll narrow it down to those five. I'm going to put a link on social media, and we're going to turn it loose and and let the Leadhead Brigade decide who our pilot will be. You need to kill that frog, man. It's too loud. <laughs> we we tried. They're, they're they're taking over. He's tearing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't whip out the twenty two here in the city limit. You put a suppressor on it. Oh, speaking of suppressors, by the way, uh, we are giving away a suppressor. And tell them what they got to do to win, Eric. How they, they have to, how they get eligible to win that suppressor. They have to make a social media post uh, what freedom means to you. And they have to use the hashtags what? TL300, TL Freedom Cast. And then tag Talking Lead and tag Dooley Defense. Yeah. And, and I just saw Amber's today. Amber made a good post, so this is a good example of how you become eligible for this. And I'm scrolling up through our, our post here. And it says, Anytime I hear the word freedom, my brain automatically translates it to sacrifice. We only have the freedoms we do because of the brave men and women who serve in our military and the brave, amazing, strong families supporting them. They all sacrifice. The families with loss of time and Constant worry for their loved ones, safety, the soldiers with missed holidays, birthdays, constant stress, pain, injuries, living with what they have seen and been asked to do. Some even pay the ultimate sacrifice, their lives, all to protect our freedom and safety. I'm one of those families, my brother, top in the sunglasses. She's got pictures posted. You can go to our visitor post and see her post. Uh, was deployed to Afghanistan, and there was not a day that went by that I did not worry about and pray for him. He is not the only one in my family to serve. My father, the LEO, on the motorcycle. Nice, I'm looking at him there. Uh, served in the Air Force and tried to re-enlist after 9-11. My grandfather, a handsome gentleman in uniform, also served in the Air Force. Our flag does not wave with the wind. It waves with the will and strength of our military and their families, along with the last breath of every soldier who gave their lives for you and me. Hashtag Freedom Cast. Hashtag Dooley Defense. Hashtag TL300. And she also tagged Talking Lead and Dooley Defense. And she used extra Leadhead Brigade and hashtag Talking Lead. That is like very well done, overboard, you don't have to go to that links, but that very well said, Amber. That that is amazing. So thank Thanks. you, thank you for that post, and uh, thank your family for the service. And that's what you guys do. I mean, it could be as simple as just taking a picture of you out fishing and and doing the hashtags. You know, that's all you got to do. But you got to use those hashtags, or I'm not going to be able to find it. So what else are we giving away, guys? What else is up for grabs? One more flashlight. One more asked flashlight. That is correct. And I think we'll just go ahead and give that away today. We're going to get get this giveaways rolling. And this one is going to go to... Dun, dun, dun. All right. He made a post on social meds here. On Facebook, and I'm going to read it if I can find it. I got a post here that says, what happened to the AK Corner? So the AK Corner is coming back. Uh, we're going to do season two. We're just in the process of getting everything cinched up uh, with some of our guests and our sponsors. But yes, it is definitely coming back. Um, I was hoping next month, the 15th, I'm still crossing my fingers, but more than likely it'll be another month or so. So, so be patient. 
The Toglet AK Corner is coming. Eric, you're going to have to kill that frog or I'm going to. I, I'll, I'll move back <laughs> inside the garage. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Get your air rifle. You can shoot those in city limits. Slingshot? You slingshot that sucker. Let's see. So here's a here's a post. Here's a good post of uh, another TL Leadcast TL300 TL Glock. Is that what that is? No, ASP Gear TL300 uh, hashtag US CG. And there's a picture of the U.S. Coast Guard z- uh, zooming down a river here, it looks like. said, Help, hope I don't ever need them, but if I do, it's nice knowing they aren't far away. And this is Ashley and Alex Kellum. So we've had a good turnout on this ASP gear to win these flashlight kits. He's not who I'm giving it to. I'm trying to get to the guy. I'm stalling. I'm stalling. Here he is. So this guy traveled to several countries. He went to two countries. One province, two states, several police stations, went to a Civil War military cemetery, and a Canadian port of entry. And this is Geo Osman. Geo Osman, as guys' pictures posted, they're on a Facebook uh, of all these stops and police stations that he visited during his little world war, uh, whirlwind tour there. So, Geo Osman is going to win the third and final ASP flashlight kit giveaway. It's the XTDF dual fuel flashlights. Did uh, did any of you guys win that that's on here? I think it was Austin that won it, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Austin won it last time. He's posted some pictures of, of his new flashlight. He's really enjoying it. So, congratulations to Geo Osman. All the flashlights are gone. So we have no more of those to give away. Uh, thanks to ASP Gear for putting those up. Uh, we'll probably get in touch with Michael again soon and, and do something else with, with those guys. But for that one, we were just uh, wanting you guys to go out and show support for your local law enforcement men and women. And uh, great participation in that, so thank you guys for doing that. So we've also got two more Glock gift codes, $75 gift codes to give away. And I haven't decided how we're going to give those away yet. You guys have any suggestions on what we should do to give the next one of those away? We did the first one with nominations, so maybe pick one of the voters at random. Pick one of the what? One of the people that votes on the nominations for the pilot. Okay, so you're saying uh, make it a participation thing on voting for who you want to win. Yeah. Okay. I we, like that. That's good. We showed appreciation for our local law enforcement. Maybe we should do show appreciation for um, a, a local military veteran or uh, um, current serving military. Okay. So we got voters or do a support the military. Any more nominations on what we do? Going once. Going twice. All right, let's vote on those two. To give it away to people who participate in voting for our pilot, how many how many yays we got? I'm voting for that one. Yeah, I'll vote for that one. Yeah, I'll vote for that one. Yeah. Okay, yep. so uh, we're going to go with that. Sorry, Amber, you got outvoted. <laughs> hey, I'm outnumbered anyway. Hey, but uh, that's not to say we won't do something um, – for, I mean, we're always doing something for our law enforcement military, so we'll come up with something else for them. So for our next um, giveaway, when I post our, our nominations that we just told you guys on who they would be, for our pilot for Lead Force One, Chelsea Sullenberger, Zapper 21, Gary Sinise, Russell Case, and the ghost of Charlton Heston, um, just participate, vote. Let me see you voting. Facebook. And Instagram. That's don't email me a vote. You got to vote on social media. If you don't have social media, then make up a fake account. I mean, it's it's easy to do. Uh, if if you think that a social media account that people are going to track you down and find you, they already have your stuff. So I mean, don't worry about it. <laughs> Should we make them do the classic like and share the post as well, or just vote? 
Uh, I think we just get them to vote right now, and it's just going to be a random. We're going to go through there randomly and and pick somebody, you know. And I'll probably whoever the guest is on the show that I do that, I'll have them randomly go through there and you know pick pick who it is. And then also, when you vote, do hashtag TL three hundred and hashtag Glock. That way we'll know that you are listeners and you heard how to do it properly by listening to the show. So there you go. That's that's our next one. Uh, $75 Glock gift card. That's how we're going to give that one away. Uh, I've got 40% off discount cards to Safari Land, and I'm just giving those out. So if you want 40%, I mean, you're actually going to use it, get in touch with me, and I will give you a code, thanks to our good buddy Keith Garcia and Safari Land um, 40% discount codes. Been giving a ton of those away. Still got a ton to give away. Uh, the kel uh CP33 handgun, we haven't come up with how we're going to do that. We're saving that for last. Once I give all this stuff out, we're going to have something big for that. It's going to be it's going to be monumental. And then the silencer that we mentioned earlier. And then the silencer from Dooley Defense. Uh, that is what freedom means to you. Hashtag TL Freedom Cast, hashtag TL300, hashtag Dooley Defense, and then tag us. If you don't know what tagging is, Google it. It's just doing the at thing, and that's how I track these things. If you don't tag me, you don't use these hashtags, and you're doing these posts, I can't find you. There's no way for me to find them, so that's how we're finding them. Uh, we're also giving away a set of x Steel Target gongs. Uh, so stay tuned. We haven't come up with uh, what you got to do to win those yet, but we've still got those up for grabs. Uh, got Rats Tourniquets from our good buddy um, Jeff Kirkham over at Rats Tourniquets. We've been giving several of those away, uh, just kind of at random. Uh, Letties, the uh, 300th edition talking Letties, uh, we've been giving those away. Speaking of Letties, I think we got our, our new Letties, the new design. This is one of them. This is the smaller one. Um, and it looks just like the other ladies. It's just there's ribs at the bottom of them. And that lawsuit that, that Yeti was suing everybody over their cups. Uh, we just had to come up with a new design. We found the design we like. And those are available at uh, Dipstick Hydrographics. Uh, you can go there. I think it's dip123.com forward slash Letty. Or Talking Lead, I'm sorry. Who, somebody's snoring. <laughs> Who's asleep? <laughs> Who's snoring? It's not me. <laughs> I hear somebody that's, snoring. That, that's the person I'm traveling with. Is that Jason? No. Jason. No, that's not me. <laughs> no, not me. I'm still with no, you. It's my dog, but it's not big enough to make that big of a noise. I don't know. That was hilarious, though. <laughs> and then we've got the bigger ones also. <laughs> and there's going to be a, a silver. It's kind of a gray silver color. Or the evil black leddies right here. We're calling the silver ones the silver bullets. Uh, and those those should be up and nice. ready to purchase uh, soon. Danny's uh, getting those those worked up. It may be a different link too, but I'll post everything once we get everything uh, solidified. So we're giving away uh, some 300th uh, episode. I don't know if you can see them back here or not. This style are the 300th edition leddies that we've got. And if you want one, you can just go to uh, Dipstick Hydrographics and tell Danny you want one. He can make these for you. Just tell him which logo you want. We've got three different ones to choose from. Um, let's see. Make sure I'm not missing anything. The gongs, the suppressor. the uh, We gave away all the 1776 gift cards. Uh, just gave away all the flashlights. Uh, so the, the kel CP33, the x Steel Target gongs, and the suppressor. And two of those gift cards from Glock we've got left to give out. So still a lot of good stuff. So make sure you're listening to the show, you're participating, and uh, engaging with the other leadheads. You know, that's what we're looking for. So that's all I've got, guys. That's it. No other news. Nothing nothing big. I did have a good time this weekend. I was at uh, Royal Range USA, and I got to shoot the uh, the new line of Canics from Century Arms. They were very nice shooters, uh, so we're going to have them on soon. We'll be talking about those, um, but yeah. I think my husband's a little jealous here because he's got the old version and you were shooting the new version. 
Yeah, they they really. I mean, even the old ones are solid. I mean, they're nice, but the the ones I was shooting were the Combat Elites, and they've got some uh, salient parts in there. They teamed up with them, and they you know got the trigger and the barrels, and they're they're really nice. And still under, I think somewhere around you know seven hundred, six hundred bucks for for one of those tricked out. Where where yeah. if you get a Glock with those parts, it's going to be eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah, that's yeah. not a bad price with that trigger. No, it's a it's an excellent price. The sights and the trigger and the barrels that the, they've got the mag wells, the extra magazines. It's it's a heck of a value. And those were my first shots. I posted the target that I shot too. I mean, those were my actual boom, boom, boom first shots, just plugging away with it. So. Um, but that's all I did this weekend. What about you guys? You guys do anything fun? Just I, uh, I cut grass. Cut, oh, I did that too. <laughs> I used all the crazy news going on to uh, make an excuse to go buy the last parts for Bill Mamber's 300 blackout pistol. Been slowly getting stuff, but with all the crazy stuff going on, who knows? There might be a a pin swipe next week and they're illegal. So I needed to get everything to get it built before that happened. Very cool. I did get the uh, six, five Grendel built. Also, I got LaRue had sent me a six, five Grendel, uh, go figure, <laughs> but, uh, upper. So I got that upper built and it just flops on a, a regular AR 15 lower. Um, I got to get a lower. I don't have one. I'll, I'll build one specifically for it, but, uh, I'm looking forward to taking it out. Hopefully this weekend and shoot it. If I can find is that going to be a hunting gun or I don't know. I got to go shoot it and see how it feels first. Yeah. It may be a sold gun. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I may hate it. I may love it. I don't know. We'll see. But that's what I got going on this weekend. I just stayed with the kids. Oh, I got to ask you about that gun. So you made that post on the gun that you uh, that you were shooting, and you were talking about it's got an odd setup. Yeah. Talk about that. Um, I if you want to, if you don't want to, I, I understand. No, it's totally okay. Yeah. Um, I have an autoimmune disorder, which has caused me to have a lot of surgeries, and a lot of them have been to my core. So I have a hard time. Like the AR-15 that my husband currently shoots was originally my Mother's Day gift, but nice. I can't shoot that standing up. You're a good gift giver, I man. <laughs> oh yeah the year before that it was my shotgun wow. um so i can't shoot that standing up and i was wanting the next gun i wanted was a 308 and so my dad built me that 308 um it's a uh mauser action and a big old 700 remington, remington 700, 700 full, barrel. full barrel and it's a beast but in order to be able to to see to sit and shoot it from a bench, I have to have the, the optics back farther than normal. So I use the cantilever um, scope mount so that I can, uh, which, which has really it higher yeah. so that it's up and back because I have yeah. to sit a certain way right. in order to shoot. But you were able part. to find the parts to accommodate your particular shooting style. Nice. Yeah, because my core is completely shot. I have permanent nerve and muscle damage. So, yeah. Well, it's good that you found a way around that and still get to go out and enjoy your Second Amendment rights. So, yeah, that's, Kudos that's to you favorite. and kudos to Mark for giving such awesome gifts. <laughs> yeah, that was my Christmas gift from him, too. So him and my dad. <laughs> I, think surprised with that. I think you should marry me, man. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like everything I wanted. Everything I wanted for Christmas, man. I'll trade you for a 300, 300 blackout. Letty. <laughs> well, if you need help with that, I can help you. So just just give me a call. I hope you get that together. Well, unless you guys got anything else, that does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. Um, parting words. Let's start with Jason. I uh, just want to say uh, thanks for having me on again, and uh, it was fun. And vote for Sully. Vote or the for ghost Sully. of Charleston Heston. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Uh, don't back these red flag laws. 
go donate to gun rights organizations like Gun Owners of America and the Second Amendment Foundation. Not Antifa. No. Kenneth. Kenneth H. Uh, McGee, baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this has been fun. Uh, never done anything live before. I uh, just want to say, like I said earlier, just to make sure you're representing the Second Amendment community in a positive light. Amen. Amen. If 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 you think what you're about to do may not be cool, it probably isn't, so don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perry, up in New York. Yeah, uh, uh, I really appreciate you having me on and uh, just make Word to everybody, just uh, carry safe and carry often. There you go. I want to see you at Royal Range soon, too. Oh, definitely. We'll go shoot when you get back. Mark and Amber. I was going to say thanks for, for having us on and inviting us, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. Cool. All right. And then, uh, yeah, thanks for having us on. And everybody remember, this is National Shooting Sports Month. We'll go out and find someone who's never been out shooting and teach them how to do it, grow our membership in the Second Amendment community. There you go. Very good. And guys, I want to thank you all for taking the time to be on. Uh, all the support over the years. I know some of you are new leadheads. Some of you have been with us since the, the very beginning. So thank you for years and years of support. I greatly appreciate it. Without you guys, I uh, wouldn't be doing this. Uh, just... It's something that I started because of my love of firearms and I wanted to learn more about our Second Amendment rights. And uh, it just kind of evolved from there. So as as Michael knows, you know, from our very first episode to where we are now, the show has evolved um, leaps and bounds, I like to think. Um, Very much so. I'm, I'm glad you got rid of the uh, rape whistle knife. <laughs> <laughs> I've evolved from the rape whistle knife to a buck knife. Thank goodness. Uh, but uh, again without our sponsors uh, these shows wouldn't be possible either so go out and support those that support this show uh, everyone that's uh, involved with our giveaways uh, Rats Tourniquets Keltec Dooley Defense uh, ASP x Steel Targets 1776 United where you go and get those awesome t-shirts like Kenneth is wearing uh, Modern Spartan Systems I forgot we're giving away a Modern Spartan Systems cleaning kit also we got two of those we're giving away uh, do you guys remember how we're giving those away? You're just supposed to post something that, and yeah, you got your 1776 United shirt. I see that. You just post uh, something that you would use uh, your mo your modern Spartan Systems kit to clean, uh, or your TVT engine oil additive. We've had vehicles posted, we've had guns posted, we've had knives posted. So uh, use the hashtag MSS and hashtag TL300. And uh, tag Modern Spartan Systems, tag Talking Lead. We're giving two of those away. So I forgot about that. So Modern Spartan Systems, go show them some love. Get 15% off by using the code TLCP15. And you're going to get 15% off your purchase. And they're going to donate an additional 15% to... Um, uh, see, Patriot. Thank you, Camp Patriot. Uh, worthwhile organization we had them on a couple episodes ago uh, and then ASP they still have that uh, code set up for you guys to get 20% off at ASP USA any of their flashlight or their flashlight accessories and that code is LED20 so you get 20% off there uh, and then we've got code set up with most of our friends of the show and sponsors typically it's uh, LEADHEAD is the code Try that. If it doesn't work, get in touch with me, and uh, we'll get something something set up to you, for you. Uh, thanks to Safari Land. Uh, uh, thanks to Dipstick Hydrographics. And thanks to Glock, definitely. Am I forgetting anyone? Really quick on the Glock thing. We ran into something interesting. So if the next ones we give away are to people in Alabama, they need to know that they have to... Um, go through this rather lengthy process uh -huh. to ship to them and there are certain places in Alabama that they can't ship them. Okay. Certain they, things they can't ship to. They can't ship, right? 
No, the, there are certain places in Alabama that okay. they can't. Well, I just stay. won't pick somebody from Alabama next time. Yeah, our laws are crazy. Yeah, well, and, and with all these giveaways, thank you for making that point. All state, local, federal laws apply. So if you aren't eligible for the prize, if you if you are picked for the prize, you're not going to get it. So just come out and tell me, say, oh, hey, thanks, appreciate it, but I'm not eligible for that. I can't win it. You know, if you're a felon, you're not going to get the handgun. If you're in California, you're probably not going to get the handgun. Uh, same thing with the suppressors. If you're not legally able to own these, you're not going to get them. So, I mean, just common sense. You know, you're going to get vetted. You're not just going to mail this shit to you in the mail. <laughs> Some stuff will. I mean, the leddies, I'll mail those to anybody. Anybody can have a leddy. So... All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you again so much. Thanks uh, for our uh, our chat audience out there. Sorry for the feed. I don't know what's happening with that. Again, this is new to me. We'll get it fixed uh, for the next time. But uh, shoot me an email, talkinglet at gmail.com, if you've got any comments, questions, nominations for Jack Wagons or Leadhead Brigade Heroes, uh, even suggestions for guests on, on the show, just like Jason did. Uh, I mean, the whole show was because of Jason last episode with uh, with the author. Who was that? Jack Carr. Thank Jack you. Carr. There you go, Jack Carr. Yeah. So we'll make it happen if you if you want him on the show, we'll try our best to make it happen. So you guys know the sign off, right? All right. As always, lead heads, keep your loved ones keep close. Keep your loved ones close. Firearms closer. Firearms closer. Firearms closer. <laughs> <laughs> Close Here enough. Hi, this is Leadhead Mark. And this is Leadhead Amber. And congratulations, congratulations to Topping Lead, Lead on 300 episodes. episodes. This is Leadhead uh, Michael Perry. Congratulations to Topping Lead on 300 amazing episodes. I uh, hope there's many, many more like it. Congratulations to Talking Lead on 300 amazing episodes from QQRN. Just a trade Perfect. Do you have a dog over there in that UT bed? Is that a dog bed? Uh, no, that's just a uh, Kleenex box cover. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, that's what was snoring if there was a dog over there. I swear to God, somebody no, was snoring. my dogs were outside. <laughs> Somebody was snoring earlier. <laughs> I've got the audio to prove it.